So you're thinking of moving to New Smyrna Beach, Florida, but you better know about these five negatives that might scare you away. If you want to find out more, make sure you stay tuned. What's up everybody, it's Jimden and Brian. We're the for sale team right here in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. If you're new to the channel and you wanna know everything about working, sleeping, playing, eating, buying, and or selling anywhere here in the New Smyrna Beach area, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. We have people reaching out literally every single day, whether it's buying, selling, moving, or relocating. If you're thinking of making the move, make sure you reach out. Shoot me a call, text, email, message in a bottle, or schedule a Zoom in the link down below. However you need to reach us, we've got your back when you're moving to New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest questions that people always ask us when they're considering the New Smyrna Beach area is, what do you do about the sharks? Now, sharks are insane here. There's a ton of them, and I'm not even gonna downplay it because they're there. The coastline extending roughly 15 miles around the town is a shark attack hotspot. All you have to do is take a drone, you fly it out over the water, and you will see them literally by the hundreds. New Smyrna Beach has been nicknamed the shark attack capital of the world. But the thing is, it's a little bit skewed. It's not every not everything is what it seems on the internet. Now, the videos that you see on the internet of New Smyrna Beach, Florida, with all the you know the massive amounts of black tip sharks, that's during their actual annual migration period. So they'll actually be coming through the New Smyrna Beach area from September to November. Then again in March and April. Yes, a lot of people are always concerned when they imagine a beach full of sharks. They imagine Jaws. It's not the case. You're not gonna be <laughs> you're not gonna be seeing sharks that are more than you know about. Yay big. Yeah, most of them are tiny, small. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tiny on the actual beach. Um, and you'll see them, they're in about a foot of water sometimes. And they're scared of people, um, as evidenced by the videos. And on the New Smyrna Beach, they're, the more north you go on the beach towards the inlet, the, the better the chances of seeing a shark um, or get bit by a shark because it's the murky water there. And a lot of times they don't even know that they're not particularly going after swimmers or surfers. They just happen to bump into younger sharks, bump into to, uh, surfers or swimmers, and when they bump into, they just, they bite. So they don't, they're not attacking people on purpose. Um, usually it's like, it's because they just don't know any better. You gotta think, it's it's essentially the same as, as like a dog or, or, you know, any other animal. They don't have hands. So their first instinct is to bite whatever, you know, is there because that's essentially their first point of contact. Mm -hmm. with whatever it is. That's how they explore, that's how they vent out their curiosity and figure out what exactly something is, whether it's edible or not, and sometimes it might be you. And there's, oh, there's also things you can do, it's like don't wear jewelry while you're, um, while you're in the water, like shiny jewelry or shiny clothes that, that's attracted to them that might think it's a fish. Even actually the bottoms of your feet look like, that's why sometimes surfers get attacked because the bottoms of their feet are white and they look like fish swimming around. That's, that's my <laughs> kicking move. Um, but with the jetty as well, um, it's gonna increase your chances of seeing sharks and such because you know, it's the, the fish and everything, they're, they're being fed into that jetty, you know, the water's moving in and out of that area. But the waves are, they're beautiful. They're beautiful right there by the jetty. So, you know, if, if, if you wanna catch the big waves as well, you gotta pick your poison. There's going to be some more <laughs> sharks there, but oh man, the waves are so worth it. Definitely. So if you're not a fan of sharks and they absolutely petrify you and scare you, maybe the shark attack capital of the world isn't the best spot for you. If sharks scare you too much, make sure you check out our other videos on Port Orange and Daytona. They have some more, sh they, they still have sharks, but not as, not as much. They don't have the name. The shark attack capital of the world. <laughs> Same water though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many sharks. All right, so next up on the, the list is the weather. Um, and 
one thing you need to know about Florida is it rains a lot. It doesn't rain, it doesn't rain for a long time. It just rains a lot for a very short time. And it pretty much consistently in the summer, is, it rains almost every day for at least five minutes. But at least, yeah, but you learn to live with it. You just go out and you do whatever you want to do. You just got to know that at some point you are going to probably get rained on for a few minutes and it doesn't last. It actually feels good because it's hot and it cools everything down a little bit. Um, the only downside to that too is with the with the rain is the clouds and the clouds is the lightning. The lightning here is nuts. Oh yeah. But a beautiful sight from the beach. I mean, looking out to the clouds and watching the lightning from the beach is, is ph phenomenal. I mean, you'll see a, a group of people, they're literally, they're, lightning watching is a legitimate thing here. People will flock to the beach if the if the storms are rolling out over the ocean, and you can see amazing displays of just just lightning shows. It's beautiful. You got the spider lightning that's you know striking on over the ocean, and it just literally fans out, explodes. You see it cackling like up in the the clouds and everything, and you can just see the, the weather literally coming alive. Uh, the the weather here is it's it's a whole different beast if if you're not used to it. Yeah. And you know it's it's very wet. It's very, you know, windy sometimes. It, it's, the, the lightning is the biggest thing, but I mean, that ties in weather. I, the, the biggest concern on a lot of people's minds it isn't necessarily just the weather, it's, it's, it's the big swirling kind of weather. Or it's the hurricanes. The hurricanes. <laughs> and it absolutely terrified me. Uh, coming, in, you know, go, going into Florida, I, when I originally came here from the Philippines, uh, my family kind of split up. Half went to Florida because it was, you know, similar climate and such. And then the other half went to Arizona. We're in Arizona. It was nice. It's safe. Nothing happens in Arizona for, for better or for worse. It, nothing happens. And you don't get fires. You don't get, you get sometimes you get fires. But you don't get. Haboobs. What about the haboobs? Haboobs are nothing. You know, <laughs> if, uh, if you've never seen a haboob, it's literally a massive cloud of just dust just, that's just, just storm it, dust engulfs wall. everything it picks cows up and throws them no it doesn't it does it does in queen <laughs> creek i swear i was hurt i heard, heard. Uh, you don't get tornadoes you don't get hurricanes you don't get anything of the sort not even earthquakes and it's, it's amazing right you know it's a very safe area um i always thought my family was nuts moving to florida because all you hear about is the hurricanes, and that is actually one of the number one reasons we stayed away from Florida, just because you know you just have this preconceived notion of just you're gonna get blown away because of the hurricanes, and it's honestly not that bad at this point after living here in Florida for six months, right? At this point, I love hurricanes, as nutty as that sounds, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. I'm obviously not talking about the big, you know, scary category four, category five, but you know. The majority of the hurricanes that are category one or two, they are amazing because the waves that they generate are awesome. You get these amazing five, six footers, sometimes even seven and eight foot, you know, waves here in New Smyrna when the wave or when the hurricanes are out in the Atlantic, and it's amazing. You just see the locals, you see everyone just flock to the beach, and it is just a bunch of kids just playing in the playground. Oh, all that is the ocean. All the Brodies in their vans. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the waves of yesterday were good. The last couple of days have been they, phenomenal. They were amazing. <laughs> um, uh, also, the weather—it's uh, just hot and moist and muggy during the summer. So, um, if you don't like your clothes sticking to you um, all day long, then uh, this is not the place for you. It's—it's uh, it's definitely moist. That's it's actually, no Arizona. It's, it's not Arizona. Arizona's got dry heat. <laughs> this this is about as wet as you can get. So. If you're not a fan of moist, wet, inclement weather and beautiful shows of lightning and the occasional hurricane, then maybe New Smyrna isn't for you. Oh, and if you and if you have uh, dogs, then definitely the, the thunderstorms are usually an issue with the dogs. So if you have a lot of dogs, uh, it, it becomes an issue because <laughs> they, they are scared. Uh, a lot of you that have called me... Uh, can probably vouch for the fact that you can hear my dog if it's raining I'll, I'll give you a heads up you can probably hear my dog just you know barking up a storm they absolutely hate the lightning thunder uh, if any of you have any tips actually on, <laughs> on how to stop that on how to, how to you know 
make him a little more at ease. And the, the thunder lighting. here is nuts. I mean, like, it's it's like building shaking thunder. I think it's just it's a different different beast. The storms here are a different beast. So if you if you don't like those types of things, then definitely New Smyrna is not your place to to be. But if that hasn't scared you away yet, make sure you stay tuned for these next three topics because they might. How the Daytona Beach area is spread out, right? You've got I-95, which runs perpendicular to the coast. Now, alongside the coast, you have the cities that are all there along the beach. Uh, up there at the top, you've got Ormond Beach, then you've got Holly Hill, Daytona, South, South Daytona, Daytona, then Port Orange, then New Smyrna, and then Edgewater, right? Now, with New Smyrna, when you're getting off of 95, you get onto this road called State Road 44. Now, State Road 44 is going to be the lifeblood of New Smyrna. That is the direct way to the heart of the city, and it's direct way right to the beach. So it's amazing. It's great. The thing is, when you have a sleepy little beach town that ends up blowing up in population, ends up, you know... A lot of tourists. A lot of tourists. It's, 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 it's a damn good beach, and everyone knows it, and everyone loves it. So during those peak visiting times, you know, the holidays, uh, summer vacation, times like that, you can bet that it's going to be pretty packed. So State Road 44 during rush hour times is going to be bumper to bumper traffic. And obviously it's nowhere in comparison to areas such as, you know, LA or, or New York, but it's, it's, it's still a pretty, cons it's a pretty sizable amount of traffic nonetheless. Yeah. Um, if you know the areas, there's different back roads and such that you know, kind of diverge off of State Road 44 that you can, you know, go and cut through the boonies and such. Um, just don't get lost. <laughs> and 44, since there is so much traffic, and I'm not sure what it is, but that road, I think it's so long and straight that people just get lackadaisical and there's accidents daily there all the time. Like just, you're constantly seeing accidents down there. Um, and, uh. Yeah, I don't know if people are just on their phones texting or what, but or it's just Floridian drivers. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I think it is a combination of, of the two. With the, I mean, yeah, it is a long road. I mean, once you get off of like State Road Forty Four goes for for a while. If you go past I ninety five, um, they're like they're perpendicular. But I mean, I think it's a combination of the fact that a lot of people here they've never seen blinking yellows. Oh, the blinking yellow the left blinking, turns. Uh, the blinking yellow arrows. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people, I've, I've, I've literally seen it just happen, and like right in front of you. They don't, I don't think they quite understand what it means. And you see them, they'll just turn out like right they, into the traffic. They have the right away, and you're just like, dude. <laughs> they don't think about what it. What were you doing? And and if you're not from Florida, you've never been to Florida. Um, the traffic lights here are forever. They take forever. They're they, they're on the old timer the, system. They're yeah. Not like, so you know it's like five minutes for this side, then five minutes for that side, and then <laughs> so you literally sit there for a long time. Oh uh, yeah, and if there's an accident, as there is fairly pretty much daily on 44. The more traffic, <laughs> more traffic, exactly. Also, when you get into uh, another thing to think about in the traffic is when you get close to the beach, since it is a driving beach, a lot of the parking gets, uh, they didn't, New Smyrna doesn't have a lot of parking in, in the town just off mm -hmm. on the thing. So, because most of the people drive on the beach and park on the beach. So you've got, you know, thousands of people on the beach, but during high tide, they shut those gates down and then people just start parking everywhere. And the traffic gets backed up, waiting for the the ramps to open up so you can drive out onto the beach. So sometimes you've got to really like traffic wise, you got to time it. You, you you have to look on like a surf line or something, or the Volusia Beach app, and to see when high tide is. Because you could, uh, it's one thing I learned. You could just go down there all of a sudden. They just they're you're waiting all of a sudden. They just shut the gates and they do it sometimes two hours before high tide, two hours after. So but once you're on the beach, you're on the beach. Um, just take your claim. Yeah, you, 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 you just go there. I mean, <laughs> we literally will sometimes just drop the car off knowing that it was going to be busy or the high tide. We'll go drop a car off in the morning. And then if we want if we want to be there later, then we can just drive back down. And, and that way we have our spot on the beach and all our gear and stuff like that. So that's one thing to think about as far as traffic. But where the real issue comes up whenever we do that is finding parking for the other car that we used to get to the beach. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's a whole operation, you know, it's, I'll go, I'll drop everyone off, and then I'll 
drive down maybe like a mile or two down. Thankfully, thankfully, segways are a thing, and <laughs> Smyrna's beach is made for you know car like cars can drive on the beach. So sometimes you know if it's a nice sunny day or if the waves are amazing, you might just see me just segwaying down the beach to my car. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if you're not a fan of traffic, and traffic is not exactly your thing in any way, shape, or form, I can recommend a ton of countryside areas here in Florida, um, but New Smyrna might not be the place for you. Or you can just either take the bus line that they have, or, um, Uber's not really good here, uh, right? It's not. And, uh, uh Lyft, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's hard to get an Uber or Lyft here. Traffic uh, baby. <laughs> traffic baby. Or you can bike down to the beach. I mean, it's, there's bike, there's, there's uh, bike lanes and things like that. A lot of people bike to the beach. Or, <laughs> or just live by the beach. And then you don't have to worry about it. And, That's a thought. Yeah. So, and if you, you know, we know some good real estate agents. If you, if you want to do that. I know a guy. The next thing is, is shopping. Um, doesn't sound like that'd be a negative thing to think about, but if you're really, uh, if you like big box stores like Target and Best Buy and things like that, those big box chain stores, um, New Smyrna doesn't have them. I mean, we have a Walmart and we have a Beals. And, and, and I, Publix. And, there, well, there as far as yeah, yeah. grocery stores, we have two Publix. We have an Aldi and we have a Winn-Dixie. And uh, as far as grocery, and then some small town grocery places uh, like that. But as far as like if you like to, you know, go to Target and things like that and like takes you five minutes to get there and whatever you want to be close to that kind of stuff it's that we definitely don't have that but the good thing is is Daytona is really close and they have a target and it, you know Daytona's like you know 15 10 15 minutes away to get to either Port Orange too has a they have target and Walmart and all that kind of stuff but but yeah it's, but what's cool about it is we're it's a local town so there's a lot of local really cool local shops so you gotta like luck a lot of local, blah, 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 locally made stuff. You got little, really cute little shops. Uh, more for the ladies than the guys, probably. But on like Flagler, there's just little boutique after boutique after boutique of really cool little uh, local type of of stuff. And there's some good little fishing and tackle box shops and local surf yeah, shops. Local and such. surf shops. So if you like supporting local, and and this is definitely a place uh, too as far as shopping goes, but. If you like supporting uh, the Waltons, well, I guess the Walmart's here too, but <laughs> I couldn't think of who owns Target. But if you like supporting those guys, you got that about 10 minutes away. And options, 10, baby. 10. You got options. <laughs> so now we're at our final topic on this list, and this tends to be the deal breaker for most most people that end up not coming to the New Smyrna area. It's, it's not the Sharks. It's not the weather, it's it's not the traffic or the shopping, it's it's the bugs. And the bugs here are awful. Creepy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not something that's even worth downplaying by any means. If someone is sitting here and blatantly telling you that the bugs here aren't that bad, they're bold face lying to you. It's Florida, the bugs here, there's something in the water. They're, they just, <laughs> they, they, they're drinking milk. There's, it, they're big, and they're absolutely terrifying at times. Um, you'll see just you know massive spiders, massive you know dragonflies constantly. The noceums, the mosquitoes, horseflies, horseflies. The cicadas are coming alive now. It's it's been seven years, I guess, and here they are. Oh. It's loud at nighttime. So loud. Uh, <laughs> um, the. the when I see the other day, I haven't seen before uh, a rhino beetle. Is that what they're called? Uh, the with the horn. Rhino beetle. <laughs> I, I don't know what the name is, but I think it's a rhino. It's the one with the, like it's got the horns. I'll I'll throw in a picture. <laughs> the rhino beetle. Uh, and if you don't like walk, walking through uh, spider webs, that like I think on a daily basis when I play disc golf, I I take a full spider web to the face because I for some reason haven't learned to. The, the chop technique as I'm walking. If you see this disc golfing, you'll literally see it whenever I go on. <laughs> he does every time. Right? Not me. I just full face I'm into just like it. Full on, just like <laughs> squatting the hell out of whatever's in front of me. And it saved my ass so many times. Not me. I just like taking the web to the like face. Like taking webs to the face. Yeah. It's fun, I guess, apparently. 
<laughs> now, as a homeowner, the primary bugs that you should be worried about and more concerned about is the wasps, the mud daubers, because those are going to be directly on your home. They're going to be nesting, and you want to make sure you keep an eye out on them on your eaves. Make sure you knock them down as soon as possible, because the longer you let them, you know, be up there and thrive, the the more comfortable they're going to be, the less chance you're going to have of them leaving once you knock that thing down. Um, other things are also going to be the roaches, which are absolutely disgusting. They get massive here. It doesn't matter. A lot of Floridians try calling them palmetto bugs. They No, they're roaches. Oh, they're, it's bugs. disgusting. Don't try to give it a pretty name just because it's it's gross. It, no, it's... The, the, they're cockroaches and they're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and then down on the ground, the biggest things you have to worry about are the ants. Florida ants are awful. Oh my gosh, the fire ants are ridiculous. They'll get into your home if you don't keep up on your pest control, regardless of how, you know, any, way, any means necessary. They will get inside if you do not keep up on it. So make sure you keep up on your pest control. Do something, at least get something on the ground just to keep the bugs out to the best of your ability. And there's a good chance that you could be standing in the grass sometimes and all of a sudden you'll have a thousand fire ants on your leg. They're sneaky. And, and they get up there and then I think they count to three and all bite at the same time. I think they crawl up and they're like, one, two, three, there. Yeah. It, right? It's, <laughs> you don't know you're there and then all of a sudden like just massive like, It's like you look down and your eyes don't quite focus right. <laughs> it's scary. And all of a sudden you just, you see speckles everywhere and you're you're done. You're done. done. So yeah, It just hurts. Did you? What's a mud dauber? It's a so mud daubers are they look like wasps but they're black, and they're the ones that leave like they look like oh is that like, like the, pan, the little pan little... flutes sometimes like on like All right okay and then they also do like the the little, little like black smear is that it's like that is? It, it looks like mud literally yeah, just like, yeah oh right okay but they're not fun <laughs> mud dauber um, and the biggest thing is termites. Florida is a hot spot for termites, and if you have a wood foundation or a wood structure home, keep an eye out on that and make sure it is up to date and constantly being monitored. Now, the nice thing is, most of the homes here in Florida are cinder block, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about your home caving in on you. If you are one of the few poor, unfortunate souls that has a wood home that is still standing and hasn't been blown away by a hurricane. Get those termite inspections. They will Definitely. save you. So if I haven't scared you away yet and you're still thinking of making the move, make sure you reach out, shoot me a call, text, email, message in a bottle, or schedule a Zoom in the link down below. If you want to binge watch our other videos, make sure you check them out as well. If New Smyrna isn't quite the right area for you, let me know. Because if you don't tell us, we don't know and we can't help you. However you need to reach us, we've got your back when you're moving to New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out our other videos, check them out here and here. Go! Go!